there is a cat so rare and which lives in places so remote and wild that the rest of the world barely knew it existed until recently. It is the snow leopard. Often referred to as the grey ghost or ghost of the mountains, this animal's rarity and elusiveness was legendary. In the past, it was known as the ounce, but today we've settled on the name snow leopard. However, it's quite different to the leopard and in fact is more closely related to the tiger. The snow leopard wears a luxuriant coat which is so thick it conceals a surprisingly long-legged and lithe animal. It has a strangely heavy brow unlike any other cat. Along with a gigantic tail weighted with fat. But like all the other big cats, it feeds on animals that are more often than not larger than itself. While the snow leopard has long been known to science, images of wild snow leopards have only recently become possible. This is partly because of new technology, but mostly because increasingly snow leopards allow us to see them. The places where snow leopards live are almost always remote, barely inhabited by people. Cold, down to minus 40 in the winter, and yet extreme altitude, extreme cold, and extremely rugged landscapes don't seem to bother this cat at all. It's really hard to imagine how anything lives here. But as I discovered while making this film, it does so with some of the most extraordinary behavior I've ever seen. The snow leopard may be the world's smallest big cat, but I can safely say it is the toughest. In this sparse environment, one of the snow leopard's biggest challenges is meeting another of the opposite sex. My biggest challenge was just to find such a perfectly camouflaged animal in this daunting landscape. Snow leopards are found across most of the high mountains and plateau of Central Asia. They have the narrowest distribution of all the big cats. We don't even know how many there are, but it's thought there may be as few as 3,500 still in existence. In the maze of peaks and gullies they normally inhabit, snow leopards are mostly invisible to humans. These are the Tost Mountains on the edge of Mongolia's Gobi Desert. It's dry and very cold, minus 40 in the winter. This population of snow leopards is one of the best studied in the world. But we've really only just begun to gather scientific knowledge about snow leopards. Much of their lives is still a mystery. I started working with uh, snow leopards in 2008, so it's been nine years now. Since you can't really see 
the snow leopards. They're so very well camouflaged and in these mountains you can't follow them. The only way to collect solid data is to fit some sort of a tracking device to a number of individuals. And the GPS collars we use have gathered a tremendous amount of information and painted a new picture of what a snow leopard is compared to what we thought back in 2008. Oyan's data reveal that snow leopards travel more widely than anybody thought. So for us, finding one is going to be difficult. By watching the local wildlife, we can get an idea of where a cat might be. This is a lammergeier or bearded vulture. The Asian range of this giant scavenger overlaps that of the snow leopard almost exactly. Its presence here suggests there could be a big cat nearby. The Cinereus vulture, the second largest of all vultures, is here too. As morning sunlight hits the peaks, warm air begins to rise. These huge vultures use their three meter wingspans on thermals to carry them over the mountains and their high-resolution vision to notice the tiniest details, such as snow leopard kills far below. The golden eagle is another camp follower, often scavenging more than it hunts. All these birds depend to a greater or lesser extent on snow leopards. And the fact that they're here at all, and in the air, is a sign that perhaps there is a cat nearby. Observing the prey of snow leopards can be helpful too. These are wild sheep called agali. They look nervous. And these are Siberian ibex. These wild goats are extremely sharp-eyed and suspicious. The ibex are also very agile and short-footed. Any predator that could actually catch one of these in this landscape would need some extraordinary abilities and nerves of steel. The mature males are more than twice the weight of a snow leopard, and they're strong. Yet studies show snow leopards hunt even the largest males. When I started this project, I'd never seen a snow leopard myself. But we now know for sure that the Tost Mountains are home to some 15 or so. And looking out for signs of their presence, the usual suspects were apparent. And also the remains of a kill, just a leg. Watching us long before we spotted her, a female snow leopard, half a kilometre away. My first ever. Rather obviously stuffed with ibex. For us, daylight sightings were rare and mostly fleeting, and frequently too distant to get good pictures. We found the best time to see snow leopards was dawn or dusk. But even these distant glimpses of such a rare, elusive animal were a delight. Oyan's studies show that here, snow leopards do feed mainly on ibex, 
and that they are active mostly at night. The cats watch the wild goats moving from their daytime grazing areas to nighttime sleeping spots. The sure-footedness of the ibex on these almost vertical cliffs is impressive. There's one more kind of goat in these mountains, slower and less nimble than the ibex, the domesticated cashmere goat. These animals could be a tempting substitute for the aves of ibex, and the secret of snow leopard is not above a bit of goat rustling. But even so, few people ever see the cats. Hence their other name, Ghost of the Mountain. Because of snow leopards and wolves, the goats can't be left on the mountain at night. They spend the hours of darkness in the relative safety of the gear. The previous night, a snow leopard took a goat, decapitated it, and took the head away. The herder thinks it could come back tonight. No one's ever filmed a snow leopard at night before, so this is a bit of an experiment. To help us, we have a thermal camera. Even at minus 20, it gives a clear view of everything. The super-sensitive starlight camera reveals a sky with no trace of distant city lights. And we can use infrared light, which only the camera can see. It's invisible to the animals. But we don't need special equipment to hear dogs barking. And soon, there's a glint of eye shine. It's a fox, another follower of the snow leopard. One of the dogs checks the herd. But they all continue to bark as if something is out there. Neither of the night cameras reveal anything apart from the fox. Suddenly, on a distant ridge, two eyes are watching us. It's a snow leopard. Is that what's making the dogs bark? How could they possibly have detected it at half a kilometre away? The snow leopard doesn't appear concerned. Nor do the goats. It's coming towards us. As the snow leopard reappears, it's looking directly at us. The light from our camera monitors is a giveaway. The cat appears confident that it can't be seen and studies the situation. The fact that it is completely aware of us and the dogs, yet still proceeds, is fascinating. Perhaps it knows the dogs can't see it. And there it is again. 
much closer now. Is it trying to get to the dead goat? Almost as if it has a plan, it moves silently into the gully. And then the barking stops. Do the dogs think the snow leopard's gone now? Incredibly, the snow leopard managed to kill a kid out of view of us or the dogs. It fed quickly and was long gone before anyone realised. So the snow leopard turns out to be cunning as well. They're not called ghosts of the mountain for nothing. It's not a big loss for the herder, but opinion is divided over what to do about snow leopards. <laughs> Of course, this was revealing, but it didn't tell me much about how the snow leopards hunt ibex. So the next night we moved 20 miles to where a snow leopard had been sighted recently. Once the moon sets, the ibex seem to change their behaviour. These appear to be heading for a sheer cliff. And there, they sit down and stay quiet. Sensible behaviour on a cliff face when there's no moon. Amazingly, not far away is a snow leopard. In the still night air, the sound of scraping echoes from the canyon walls. Exactly the kind of sound that Ibex are tuned to hear. The snow leopard can't see the ibex, they're too far away. He won't even know they're there if they stay still and silent. He's marking his territory. In typical cat fashion, he leaves a message of urine to warn males to stay away and to invite females to come and find him. Watching an interaction like that makes me wonder if that's why snow leopards sometimes target domestic goats. With no moon, it's just too dark to chase ibex around on these cliffs. Perhaps if the moon was up, things would be different. As the snow leopard walks around among these rocks in the pitch dark, he appears to be listening more than looking. His gait is slow and careful. But he shows little fear of falling. Perhaps the snow leopard's thick coat would cushion an impact should they slip. Maybe their heavy brow could offer protection to their eyes in the event of a tumble. The satellite tags show that snow leopards walk long distances, often at night, navigating canyons and gullies with extreme care. But perhaps the most important thing revealed by the satellite data is that snow leopards need far more space than anyone realised. 
and Doyen's studies in Tost have shown that snow leopards are far less solitary than we thought. They scent mark and scrape more frequently than other cats. And they travel widely in search of company. They sniff the messages of those before them and then leave their own calling cards. We now know from satellite data that these cats also make long journeys between mountain ranges. In this way, snow leopards have colonized some of the most remote and harsh environments on Earth. But we still know little about them. However, the advent of tourism to these wild places gives an unexpected boost to our knowledge. More eyes and more cameras reveal rare behavior that has never been filmed before. Incredibly, they are both still alive. Only by watching it again is it possible to fully appreciate what actually happened. The snow leopard only grabs the rear of the victim.